Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 18th, and right now we're looking at the Doppler radar here, the Langley radar, and you can see some of the shower activity moving across the area. This is going to bring that continued thunderstorm threat as we go on in through the day today. And as you can see, if you look closely here, there's a lightning strike down here just off of Long Beach there, approaching Highway 101. It's going to be kind of continuing on during the day. We've got thunderstorm potential all the way towards the Cascades, down through the Willamette Valley as well. We'll take a look at some of that. In more detail here in a moment. Right now we're looking at the infrared slash visible satellite imagery and you can see all the cumuliform clouds, cold air aloft moving into the region here as we speak and it's going to continue on in through at least tomorrow and then we'll take a look at the extended forecast as always it looks like the models are kind of trying to hint at a little bit of a warm-up coming towards the end of the month but we'll look at that in a little detail here as well looking at seattle yesterday again 51 degrees that's three straight days at 51 that is eight degrees below average and as of today we average about 60 degrees and that sounds quite nice as <laughs> compared to what we had this year we have not hit 60 degrees yet here in the month of august 2.78 inches of rain so far Far. So doing pretty good as far as rainfall is concerned. And this goes through April 18th through 21st. National Weather Service Spokane talking about the high elevation mountain pass snow and the scattered showers out there and a possible thunderstorm can't be ruled out as well. This is looking at Medford National Weather Service. You can see some of the higher terrain picking up some snowfall. This chilly air aloft. Siskiyou Summit, one to three inches there. So you could expect some winter driving conditions at times across I-5 as you get across the higher terrain going towards California or reverse there from California towards Oregon. This is looking at current hazards. We have some winter weather advisories here, that colder air loft. You've got some wind advisories across some of southern Idaho there through the valley as well. And we're continuing on with some of these freeze warnings here across some of the Yakima Valley as well, including some portions of eastern Washington and Idaho. This is looking at the composite reflectivity, a wider view of things here. And you can see the showery activity as we go through the day to day. Some potential, you know, fairly robust looking showers moving through the area today. So I can't really rule out a lightning strike anywhere west of the Cascades as far as we go. Then we're going to go on into tomorrow shown here. And you'll see that showery weather continue as we go on in through Wednesday also. And towards the end of the dam, you can see this next system rolling through as we go through the afternoon on Thursday. We'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment. This is looking at wind speed and it was pretty blustery last night it woke me up actually gusting 35 miles an hour at my house and you can see some gusty winds across eastern oregon idaho washington as well it'll continue on in through montana and we're going to keep this going on in through tomorrow as well as this cold air aloft will bring some breezy winds with it but then watch as the end of the uh, run here it comes on the nam 3km you can see some stronger winds approach the coastline here and pick up across some of the northwest interior straight of georgia as well vancouver island as we go through thursday afternoon this is looking at lightning flash density this is a wide view of things here and you can clearly see this activity as it moves on shore today today looks a little bit more active than tomorrow but we should have kind of a repeat tomorrow as well here we go on into Wednesday morning. We relax that activity a little bit. Then you can see that activity pick up back up again Wednesday afternoon. And that will include much of the Pacific Northwest with that potential for some lightning. This is looking at snow, 10 to 1 ratio. This is the NAM 3KM. So if I put that into motion, there's some decent amounts of snowfall occurring. And that's why we have these winter weather advisories. You can see the higher terrain picking up some nice amounts. Anything you see down to the lower elevations would be snow pellets, maybe some small hail, for example. But if you're out and about driving, especially in the backcountry here in the higher terrain watch out it's not going to take much to see some of that wintry precip out there as we go in on through thursday shown there here we go with the wider view. Here's the Gulf of Alaska. This is the European yesterday afternoons, and you can see this chilly low pressure system here pumping all this cold air into the region here. And we go on into tomorrow. We continue on with that shower activity. A little bit of a break as we go through Wednesday night into Thursday morning, but by Thursday afternoon, we start to precip across the area again as this next system rolls in. And then this weekend looks like a system's going to be impacting us as well. After that, though, it looks like we may start to warm up. As we go further on into the run here, you can see this high pressure building off our shoreline here as we go on to next week so you know there's always hope often the extended forecast as i like to say but yeah you can see that high pressure starting to build up there maybe we'll start to warm up as we go through the end of the month here this would be about april 27th the afternoon here but if we back up a little bit let's see when that high pressure starts to get going shower activity knocks off about the 24th so maybe sometime around you know a week from now or so 
This is looking at lightning flash density potential according to the European, and it's something similar to what the her the high resolution rapid refresh was showing as well. As you can see, some of that lightning potential west of the Cascades, maybe even over the Cascades as well, as we go through the day today, and then kind of a repeat as we go through the day tomorrow. Here's tomorrow afternoon. Not quite as robust, maybe west of the Cascades, however. This is looking at Portland International, and you can see maybe a tiny bit of a bounce back in the temperatures as we go through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday here, but this pretty chilly upper level lows keeping things pretty suppressed across the area for the next few days and really this is just starting to get a bit towards average this is not any kind of warmth here for this time of year this is looking at the long range and this is seattle you see the upper level trough on us right now still dealing with some dealing with some systems as we go through this weekend and then through the extended forecast you see this bump up in these temperatures here but you can see the wide variation in some of these runs here pretty low uncertainty we're looking way out i mean this is april 25th 26th there so we're still looking way out into the future at this point but however it is at least something to potentially look forward to this is looking at the european yesterday afternoons versus uh the european of the previous run there and actually let's go ahead and do this let's just run the gfs versus the european so yesterday afternoon we can see the trough over the region here and then you can kind of see this ridging try to build in here a little bit. Then we get the another next trough coming through this weekend across the area. Pretty good agreement between the models there. And then the European wants to build this ridging offshore. The GFS shows something similar, not quite as strong with that ridging here as we go on in through next week. But this would definitely be a warmer pattern. You know, not bad model agreement here looking out towards 246 hours troughing far enough west to allow this ridging to build over the Pacific Northwest. I mean... At some point, it's going to happen, and we're due for it, right? So maybe some nice weather coming up here towards the end of the month. You can see that ridge hanging on for a while here, too, as we go through the extended forecast. So no promises just yet, but it is something worth watching for uh, as of right now. This is looking at 6 to 10 day temperature outlook here. A lot of western Washington, Oregon included in that. But you can see some of this uh, southwest, you know, including portions of southern Oregon and southern Idaho trying to get above average there. An 8 to 14 day outlook here. But this will probably be changing over the next few days as we fine tune those extended forecasts. And again, I've been talking about this for about the last week now. We are likely headed towards El Nino, which means a whole different set of circumstances likely for the Pacific Northwest as we move in towards next fall winter and the following spring here we are much more likely to be warmer than we have been the last couple of years here across pacific northwest as we go on into uh, late winter and spring of 2024 you can say that with pretty good confidence right now just because we've been so cold for one and then two with an el nino signature we are much, uh, much more likely to be above average and if you guys want a nice home weather uh, affordable weather station here this is totally wireless solar powered lightning detection it's got ultrasonic anemometer it's got uv index solar radiation it's really good. It holds its own against much more expensive, expensive weather equipment. So click on the link below if you want 10% off on that. It helps the channel out a little bit. Throws me a couple dollars. But anyway, yeah, I'm very impressed with this weather station. And we're going to do it again today. Eyes on the sky, you guys, especially Cascades West. There is going to be some thunderstorm activity again today. So watch out. You might hear some of that uh, thunder out there. And you might see some of that small hail and snow pellets around. And some heavy downpours and some gusty winds. As you can see, this cold air. Great infrared or infrared slash visible satellite imagery, I should say here. But we're going to do that again tomorrow as well. And then we'll look at the forecast here coming up. I'm probably going storm chasing here tomorrow. So I may do some live streaming. And I'll just do some Q&As probably at that point. And so there may not be a video coming tomorrow, but I will be doing a live stream or a video one way or another tomorrow. So I'll talk to you guys then. Hope you guys are having a good day. Eyes on the sky again, and we will do this again tomorrow.